Hello, and I uh, hope you had a chance to take a look at this problem that, you know, at first glance seems pretty easy. So obviously we have 1 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1. So um, this is not a trick problem, but uh, it is a problem that's designed to uh, emphasize something very important in mathematics. So uh, I will obviously get to the answer here in a second, but if you haven't tried it, I would encourage you to go ahead and maybe pause the video and just give it a quick, uh, uh, a quick try, you know, 15 seconds, something like that. Okay, so let's get into this, right? So I'm gonna work the problem down and then we'll see the solution in the end. By the way, um, let me just uh, say this up front. If you are struggling in math, you need uh, additional math help, um, there's a link in the description of this video that will uh, give you more information about my math courses. But with that aside, let's get into this problem. So one minus one minus one minus one minus one. Now what you need to understand right off the bat, or hopefully you recognize, that the, this is basically one positive number and the rest of these are negative. So this first one here is actually a positive one. And now all of these guys here are negative ones, okay? Now, I'm gonna do a, a simpler version of a problem so we can kind of um, understand something that's gonna help us out with this problem. So if I said, what is one minus three? And let me do this over here, actually. Let's do one minus three, okay? So now, at first glance, probably a lot of you are thinking, oh, what a dumb question. The answer is two, okay? And you would be incorrect, right? The answer is not two. So if you answered two, I'm glad that you made that mistake so we can help you out right now, okay? So one minus three, let me actually do it a little bit bigger here and you'll see why here in a second. One minus three, the way we wanna look at this problem is you need to recognize that when we have this minus sign, okay, the subtraction operator, what you wanna do in mathematics, okay, is turn into a plus sign then you just kind of tack on this negative sign that was there. Okay, let me go back, right? We have this minus sign, a subtraction sign is the same as a negative sign. So in other words, if I have the number negative three, okay, that's like, well, is that something being subtracted from three? They're, they're one of the same. So one minus three is the same thing as one plus a negative three, we just call that plus negative. So you could just turn this uh, subtraction operator into a plus sign and then just tack on the negative sign to, to the right, whatever is in front of that number, okay? Now there's a little bit more to this. You need to see a lot of different examples in this, but this kind of definitely uh, illustrates the main concept here, okay? So in other words, is not to be confused. Now, let me ask you this question. If I asked you, what is one plus negative three? Okay, now, what is the answer there? Well, again, the answer is, now that we know that this problem is equivalent to this problem, the answer is not two. The answer is not two, okay? The answer is in fact negative two. Now, <clears throat> let me go ahead and uh, show you why, right? Now, I like to use money as an example because that seems to be everyone's favorite topic. <laughs> so let's suppose that um, you have $1, okay, in your pocket. You have $1 in your pocket, but your buddy comes up to you and says, uh, let's use a different color, say, hey, um, I need that $3 back that I lent you yesterday, right? So effectively you have, you had or you were walking around with $3 in debt or you got you have a $3 bill to pay, right? So if you have $1, all right, if you have if you have $1 in your pocket, but you have $3 in debt, how much money do you have? Well, you have zero money, right? Cuz you would give your friend that $1, but you still owe him or her $2, right? So you give him that $1, be like, "All right, I'll pay the $2 back later." So when when we're talking about um, positive, negative numbers, especially the money is a really good and easy way to understand it. A negative sign means debt, all right? It means you owe somebody, okay? So if you have $100, all 
but you have um, $120 worth of bills to pay, right? How much do you have? You have no money, okay? And you still owe 20, negative 20, right? So one plus negative three would in fact be negative two. Now this is just one um, quick example on the, the rules of positive and negative numbers. And you have to go through, you have to learn how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide. They're not hard. And if uh, you follow me on YouTube, I have a ton of videos uh, about this. But um, again, you need to really kind of uh, learn, and learn the rules in a formal way and then practice a lot of variations of them. But anyways, if you understand this, okay, let me go and erase all of this. Then we can get back to our original problem, right? So... Let's go back to our original problem here. So we have one. Now notice there's no negative sign in front of it. So in mathematics, if I write, like say the number seven, that is equivalent to a positive seven. We just don't write the plus sign in front of it. Uh, but if a number is negative, in fact, it does always have the negative sign in front of it, okay? So let's go ahead and just convert all these subtraction operators into plus negative to kind of see this problem a little bit more clearly. So we have one plus negative one plus another negative one plus another negative one and then plus another negative one. So we should have one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so here is our only positive number and then we have a negative one here, a negative one here, a negative one here, and a negative one here. And all we have to do is just collectively add these up. This is like you owe somebody one dollar, you owe this person a dollar, you owe somebody else a dollar, and even another person a dollar. So collectively, you owe four dollars, okay? So this would be negative four. So we can just write this problem now as one, let's write this way, one plus negative four. So this is going to help us, you know, be able to actually figure out what the answer is, right? So we have positive one. All of these uh, added up to negative four. So let me ask you, going back with our little money examples, one plus negative four would be what? And if you have to stop and think it through, you know, with a money example, that's perfectly fine. Well, hopefully you answered negative three, okay? So at first glance, it's kind of weird to think that, you know, 1 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 would be equal to negative 3, but that's what it is, right? All of these guys here turn out to be negative 4. We're adding it to a positive 1, All right? So our final answer is going to be negative 3. Now, um, a lot of you probably maybe said, oh, it's going to be 0 because we're just subtracting 1s from itself. And uh, that's why I purposely uh, created this problem or demonstrated uh, this point of positive and negative numbers with this uh, particular problem because in mathematics, um, most people when they're starting out, okay, and I'm talking about middle school or beginning high school, uh, many people who struggle in math, they do so because they do not uh, have the basics down. So before you really, you know, start going, you know, into more advanced stuff, you need to focus on the basics. You really got to get the basics down. I mean, like master the basics completely. All right. And what what are some of those things? Okay. Well, there's a lot of them, but I'm going to give you some very quick ones uh, and where I see a lot of mistakes with students. Uh, positive negative numbers. Okay. Something that I just demonstrated here. We call that in math real real numbers. All right, you you don't need to really remember that for now, but just know working with positive and negative numbers. Another one is fractions for sure. Lots of students think they know fractions than they um, rem uh, actually do or remember, and they're like, oh yeah, I remember how to do that, and they always do it wrong. <laughs> and it probably has to do with they just hate fractions. I'm not a big fan of fractions myself, but they're critical in math and you know algebra, etc. And then like the last uh, one that I see a lot of errors too is with the order of operations. Order of operations. And that's how we actually do arithmetic. Okay, and there's particular orders 
we do we multiply first, divide first, add, subtract, powers, all this kind of stuff. <clears throat> so if you can get these down really, really well, and and uh, to the point where you're making minimal mistakes, you're gonna do uh, you're gonna do great in math. You still have to learn the math, but you're gonna have a solid foundation uh, which to build uh, build upon. So hopefully this little uh, problem demonstrated the importance of doing that. But um, anyways. Uh, if you're new to my channel, please uh, consider uh, subscribing. I do a lot of stuff in the area of mathematics and various tests and uh, uh, etc. So hopefully you'll find value to it. And if you do subscribe, make sure you hit that um, bell notification so you get my latest videos. And if you enjoy the video, maybe give it a thumbs up and comment. I do try to read uh, the comments. I get a lot of comments and videos, so I can't get to everything, but I do try to uh, get a sense of what you're thinking so I can make uh, videos that um, you know, that will improve your math skills. And by the way, again, if you uh, like my teaching style, you want to learn more from me, I have my formal courses at my academy, and the link is in the description below. Okay, well, thanks for watching, and have a great day.